Okay. Hello everyone and welcome to this fourth episode of coding a visual geometry system from scratch. So let's just pick off right where we last time. So um last time we were trying to We were loading our images and then we were just selecting the first image from a video stream and then we were uploading it and then we were having some issues with actually rendering that image so if i just run it now we see you just get a black screen and we get this error gl uniform one i invalid operation so that's our error function, uh, which we are set up, that actually catches this and tells us there's actually something going wrong. Uh, I looked at this a little bit after the last stream, uh, it was actually quite easy to figure out. It's kind of obvious when you think about it, because here we're trying to set, so we're, we're getting the location, which is just a handle to this uniform which is this texture sampler that lets us sample from our texture in the fragment shader. But the problem is, so in this get uniform location function here, we're saying, okay, this is the shader we want to get the location in. This is the shader. This is the variable name. Return the location, please. That's all well and good. And this function runs without error. But the problem is this this function you see notice something here we're not specifying what shader we're actually operating on in our little program so far we only have a single shader program but it's quite common to have tons of different shader programs and OpenGL has to know what shader program are you actually trying to set uh, set the uniform on so the problem is that we don't actually start using our shader until down here. So we're trying to set a uniform on a shader and we don't. We're not currently, we haven't told OpenGL what shader we're currently operating on. So um, we could, so there's a couple of ways. Uh, we could just move this out here. Because for now, we're only going to use one shader. Or we could kind of move this. Okay. We could move this in here after we have set up the shader program. So I think I'm actually going to move this outside for now. Since we're probably only going to use this single shader for a little while, although in a proper program, you probably want to set it. You want to have some system that sets up the right shader and sets the right uniform each time you want to render something. But for now, we're just going to keep it simple since our program is, is fairly simple. And this should hopefully run without error. So uh, we see that we don't get that error anymore, but we still don't get an image. And the reason for that is there's a couple of things we haven't set up that we need to fix. Um, so we can remove this printf, which we don't need anymore. Um, so there's a couple of parameters on a OpenGL texture that has to be set for it to render properly. And that looks like, so if we take a look at the documentation, the function it's parameter. So there's a couple of different parameter we can set. Um, so I don't 
know if it actually specify which one are required for it to be rendered, but in any case, it turns out that what is required is tags. I um, specify to the so I'm just going to write this out, explain it in a moment. So, a lot of the time, a texture, the pixels in the texture, almost always won't line out perfectly with uh, with the textures in in the actual frame buffer that we're rendering into. So we have some we have to have some way to tell OpenGL, okay, this pixel hits this texture in this certain position, but it won't. It won't hit uh, one pixel exactly, so it has to know, okay, should it select the nearest, should it interpolate? And yeah, in this case, uh, we're telling it to interpolate. Uh, which is real linear. Uh, although now that I think about it, I think we're actually going to, yeah, kind of want to see the pixels probably, because, we're not just trying to make something that looks nice, we're trying to visualize that we're actually working on an image that has pixels. So linear, it selects four pixels around where we hit and kind of interpolates, linearly interpolates between those. But the nearest, it just always selects the nearest pixel and uses that when we sample. So this, these parameters here, define how this samples from the texture that we are set up. I believe, let's see. Uh, lots of compilers, let's see. That's not good. It's okay. See what's going on here. I think I know what's going on. So, yeah. Mm. My LVM setups was a little too helpful and inserted this include for us, which we actually don't want. Turn it off. Yeah, that's a lot better. Because we're not using GL, like the system GL headers, we're, we're doing that ourselves with Glad. So, yeah. So, okay, it's now we get our image. We actually get an image rendered to the screen. And we can also might be a little bit hard to see on stream, but you can kind of see here, here it's, you can actually kind of see the pixels. Because we selected like there's, but of course it, it's upside down. So we probably, probably want to flip that around, but okay. So now that we are flipping it around, we have kind of have to be careful because we are, we're not just using OpenGL just to get images on the screen. We want to visualize our computer vision stuff. So we want to think about, okay, we have this image buffer. Where is actually the first, like the first pixel in that image buffer that contains just all the pixels? Where is actually the first pixel in the image? I believe, I believe that should be 
the top left here, but but we're going to just test it out a bit to make sure. And of course, the, like the, the the simple and foolproof method is just to set some pixels in the image at places we know about in the data, just hard code something, and then you, you'll immediately see in the image. So, so that's what we're going to do. Okay, so we have this image, which is up here. Let's just remind ourselves. Um, yeah, we are actually thinking out here already. So yeah, so it's a, we are th getting three channels. So this should be in RGB order, I believe. And the first three bytes should be an unsigned char for the R, G, and B values. So, okay. So we need to do this before we actually upload it, otherwise Otherwise, we won't actually see the changes we make. So let's see. Just going to do this quick and dirty. Actually, already it's an unsigned chart. Okay. Cast it. Okay, so we're just going to copy a pointer because we're going to. So what this does is, I believe, okay, I'm ordering. I think this should work. So I think this should be reference it. I have to make sure. So we want to make sure we increment post increment it. So this will. This will increment it after. So this is the same as like this, because this is going to return the value in this expression before it actually increments. I think this should work. Let's try. So let's see. Uh, it's very hard to see, but there's like a tiny one single red pixel here. Okay, so I was right that this is where the data starts. And I'm almost certain it's row vector. So kind of the next byte is this first row. And then after the first row, like next byte is the next row and so on. But let's just check that as well. So it's very simply. Do like the first hundred pixels. Yeah. Again, it might be hard. <clears throat> it might be hard to see on on the stream, but there's basically. Actually, let me. Try to make the window bigger to make it easier to see. Yeah, 
yeah, now it's a bit easier to see. So you can see, so we're setting the 101st pixels in the actual memory. So the 101st, the first 300 bytes in this image buffer, we're setting basically 255, 00, 255, And since it's RGB, that means fully red. So we see it is row major, meaning it's row by row by row, and the image data is starting up here. So, so now we have to ask ourselves, where do we actually want the data to start? Because, so there's this function in, let's see, in it's called flip something. Yeah, it's to be I set flip vertically on the load. Not on yet, where are we now? Okay, so we can set this. Here maybe. So I believe this, this should actually tell the image loader to rotate the image, or to, to flip the image rather, not rotate. So we see that now we get the image the right way, but we still see that when we're setting the first 100 bytes, it's still down here in the corner. And I actually don't think this is what we want. Of course, this is kind of arbitrary, but it's slightly more common to use uh, this corner for the beginning in the of the memory and then that's just what i'm going to use because it's or maybe hmm. yeah I, I think i'm going to do that just to because then it will be a bit more like have a vector i know a matrix rather is indexed so it, it it really doesn't matter what which way you choose, just be mindful of what you select when working with image data like this. So how you present it on screen may not necessarily be exactly how the image is laid out in memory. And you should be aware of how it's laid out in memory if you're going to start poking around an image like we're we're about to do. So we're not going to flip it here, and instead we are going to simply flip it in the shader. Yeah, so yes, yeah, so we get these UV coordinates in here. Yeah, so that's the, again, there's many ways to do this. So basically we want this V coordinate to be flipped around. So we could flip it in the shader, but let's keep this called clean. And I mean, we, we generate this UV data ourselves here anyway. So let's see. For B, so I think just like. Does this work or am I? Yeah, so this work as you see. Now we just flip the v corners of the UV values of each vertices. So now, it, now each vertices will sample in a different flipped how we sample into the texture. So now the image is the right way, and the very first byte of the image is up in the left corner, and it's row major. So yeah. Okay. That looks pretty good. this anymore. So actually, I don't think we're going to edit the image anymore. So actually, we, we might still, so I was thinking of maybe making this const, but we might still want to edit 
pixels just as a debugging utility still. So I'm just going to keep this non cons actually just just make it cons and we can turn it back later if we need to. So just compile it. We need to cast it. Yeah, yeah, because we can cast from from non cons to cons, but not the other way around. So, um, okay, now we have spent some time getting our visualization up, and that works, which is great. So, maybe it's a good time. We actually start on the computer vision stuff. So, as I talked about in the first video, what we want to do is there's kind of, kind of three steps. We want to find somehow find as a stream of images is coming through we want to select points in the image that we think we're going to able to track from image to image then we actually want to track those points and we will as we lose points because camera moves too fast or maybe our code is perfect or a point becomes obscure behind something else we're going to lose track so we also have to keep finding new points to replace say we want to track say we can track 100 points at a time if we lose if we lose a couple of points we kind of want to, want to fill that up as soon as possible because we want to track as many points as possible and then the third step is to actually use all that to the tracking data to kind of figure out how does that those points fit in 3d space so we can kind of figure out how our camera is moving through 3d space <clears throat> okay so the first step is to actually find those points and for that we're going to use something called fast feature detector so feature detector is a class of algorithms that finds finds these interesting points these features in the image and many of them are so-called corner detectors where a corner is some kind of distinct uh well corner in the image because if it's just a line then it's kind of hard, hard to know as that line is moving around it's kind of hard to know find a just a point on the line on a different image but a corner that's kind of distinct so it may rotate it may move but we can kind of find if you kind of follow that corner you can track it from image to image so a corner is the type of points we want to find because corners are easier to track because they are distinct in the image in in two different directions then we can track them into the like and just an edge is just it's easier to track in one direction and hard to track along the edge so that's why we need to find corners and there's a couple different algorithms to do that we're going to try to implement one called fast uh, which is shown here from the OpenCV documentation, which is a computer vision library. Although we're not going to use that library, we're going to implement it ourselves. Um, but I just thought I used their documentation to explain this. Um, so the way FAST works is, is for each pixel P. So basically, is this pixel a corner or not then we consider the 16 pixel in this kind of ring around that pixel and if um so the pixel p 
is a corner if there exists a set of n contiguous pixels in a circle of 16 pixels, which is brighter than i plus t. So it's there is some contiguous arc of n pixels um, that is either brighter by some margin or darker than some margin than the pixel itself. So that kind of makes sense when you think about it. So n is a value we can select. It kind of selects the higher n is, the kind of the more strict we are um, about what we consider a corner. So that's, we will leave that as a variable we can play around with. Um, and also t, like the threshold, how much brighter, how much darker is must be, is also a variable we can play around with. So, uh, yeah, and there's some tricks we can do, so we can kind of test, you know, we can kind of test these four pixels and as long as, see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, so we can kind of test these, like, This should be uh, 13 pixels from this to this. Yeah. Well, that's the whole way around. Yeah, it's been like eight. Yeah, nine pixels from this. This we can we can kind of quickly test these four pixels, as long as our n is kind of long enough to cover. If n is big enough, that window it will always cover three of these pixels. We can kind of quickly test just these four pixels, and if if not even the all three of these are above the threshold, then we know that it that they poss can't possibly be like we can already discard it. So there's some early tests we can do to kind of quicker discard pixels and say, okay, this is in the corner, this is in the corner, and we can test all pixels, or we can test like. Every other pixel, so every fourth pixel, of course, then we might miss a corner. Um, of course, it's it's quite likely that if this is a corner, then this might also be a corner, and this might also be a corner. So then we then we often want to select kind of what's called non-maximum suppression, where within some area we want to select kind of the best corner. So this is all kind of details. I think we're going to save for later. So for now, I think we're just going to write some code that goes through every pixel in the image, or at least every pixel that has, like if the pixel is right to the edge of the image, it, it won't have these pixels around it. So by pixels that are within some margin inside away from the border, um, and then run this test, and then we can see how fast that runs, and then we can kind of optimize it. It's probably going to be a bit slow for our first attempt, but let's just get it working, and then we can kind of iterate on it and see, see what kind of tricks we need to use to make it faster. Of course, this is the kind of algorithm that works great on a GPU, but... I think we're going to keep GPU programming outside the scope of these series of videos. So, so we're going to just use CPU programming for this. And um, of course, this reminds me of another issue is that we have a color image and these kinds of algorithms. The thing is that kind of surprisingly, these kinds of more classical computer vision algorithms they don't really work better with color images. And then, yeah, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about why, but yeah, so we're going to convert this to a grayscale image. So that's probably the first thing we should implement. So we should implement conversion to grayscaling, and then we can 
try to work on this. Okay. Um, yeah, I can actually probably... Our code is starting to get slightly messy, so maybe we can clean it up just a little bit. Let's see. So I'm going to create a header, just put all these GLFW functions. Then, of course, you have to make sure that you do this after lab. Actually, let's rename this. Let's put some other stuff here as well. Let's feel like we can just uh, put the image buff. We can put this thing in here. Does this compile it? Does now to keep this simple? I'm just going to put stuff, so I'm not going to create a separate. CC and a header and kind of compile and link them. I'm just going to put them in the header and then include them in the file. Just to keep it simple.
it's not dynamic because it's missing that. Jail something here. Okay, let's put this. Jail instead. Um, okay, so I'll comply with the um, so other stuff yeah. Yeah, I think that's okay for now. We can fix more later. Okay, let's just. Let's call this should be image. Yeah, that's the works. Okay, yeah, so we need to create another other image called gray image. So um yeah, so we want to <clears throat> so we want to allocate a new image that has the same size, but this one will just have one. So the the RGB image, of course, has three unsigned jar per pixel, and this one will only have a single unsigned jar per pixel. So right image out of width. That was the same, but Grammage will have just a single shot. Um, yeah, 
so for to allocate some memory for it. So we will have enzyme char. This eval is to just be one. So the size of function gives the number of bytes that one search variable takes. And of course, this will just return one, but and so it won't affect the answer, but it, it makes it the code just easier to read and the compiler will just optimize that away anyway. Kind of makes it clear that this will hold enzyme chars. We will have gray image time with So I can cast this. Ah, so there is the already. The cost will be a problem because this we will actually need. Hmm. Or maybe maybe we can. Yeah, I actually think we can keep it cast, and we're going to wait a second to actually. Because I think we're going to move this to an ozone function later. So this can be a star pointer. And then we can do our stuff. And then we can get to. Then we're done, we can write to a const. But we're just going to write We don't need to do that later. And this will just be a simple for loop. So we won't do like a double, we don't need to do like a double for loop or within height here because we're just operating pixel by pixel. We don't really care when a row ends and, and they're tightly packed. There's not like some Im images have, they are pitched, meaning that each row start on a certain align and an address that's aligned to a certain width. And then you might get some junk data at the end just to make that each row starts on, on a specific memory alignment, but that's not the case here, so it doesn't matter. You can just go pixel by pixel, but not without really caring about width and right. Uh, but of course the number I actually have to know the number of pixels, which is which would be I guess we have to const. Uh, 
So there's three. Three unsigned char for every pixel. So just to multiply this by three. And I like to add the plus zero just to make it yeah, just to make it a bit nicer, even though it doesn't matter. So So there's a couple different ways to convert. Like we could just take, so we have three numbers and we're going to convert this to one number somehow. Um, and there's a couple of ways we can do this. I think. Yeah, so. See, I was. I think there's like a standard. Yeah, so you can kind of take the average, or there's a weighted method because. Yeah. I don't from hundred percent remember the rationale for this weighting on top of my head. I think it's kind of do with how well the human eye detects each. Can just start with this and then can maybe try something else if you want to later. So I think we want to. Hmm. We should convert it to floats temporarily and then. Because if you, if you multiply this by the unsigned char, yeah, it, this will get converted to float because this will be a float, and then um, Um, okay, so R. Yeah, these three values should sum up to one. So if 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 they're all two fifty five, of course, then it should be white. So for this could possibly so we want to make sure that this doesn't end up greater than 255. I think it because this isn't really super accurate, so yeah. Um, Yeah, and then we write that value into memory value. And this should work, I think. Okay, so let's just try to display this image instead. And we need to change some stuff. Yeah. Mm. 
Eternal format and the format of the day. Uh, Yeah, actually looking at this, I wonder if so format. Yeah, so so this format is this value here, which is the value of the data where uploading yeah so i actually think the right way i actually think this way we're doing it is slightly wrong it finds the internal format because this should be the internal format yeah this is opengl3 yeah uh, internal format should be one of these, and we should actually specify the size. So here we want RGB A8. And then this is just, just the red shell. So I'm pretty sure this will get, the red will just get copied to all of RGB. Is there one that's just, I don't think we can store just one, can we? I think, let's see, GLRG8, okay. Now we have GLR8, okay, so that's the one we want. Yeah, so we're uploading a single channel in some bind, and we want to store it as a GL R8, which is also a single channel in some bind. Okay, it, it, it works, but yeah, so now we are, I'm pretty sure that, yeah, so we're, we, we're, we are reading G and B here, which is always zero, so that's why we're just getting a red image. So if we just do like this, that will copy the red channel to all channels, and the texture only has a red channel, and that, that's why we get zero, uh, so when we sample a channel in texture that doesn't exist it's just zero now we sample the red channel and then we copy that to the red green and blue channel so i think now we should yeah now we get the proper grayscale image okay We can probably let's encapsulate this in the method.
It'll take a pointer to there. Let's write the destination first. Yeah, so I'm just using so I'm just using my bin rename. Forgot to add the G to so it renames multiple times in the same line. The attribute as well. Oops. This is the mix US and British spelling. That's the works. Okay, now we have our grayscale image. Now we can actually start writing our writing our fast detector I'm just going to write this uh, function for start and we probably need to play around a bit. And we can clean it up later. Uh, points. So here it makes more sense to the operate based on width and height. So let's pull that out.
So I'm just going to use u and v, u for um, horizontal pixels and v for vertical. Just I often try to use u and v for pixels since x and y. It's come to use x and y, but that's you can quickly get confusing. Like, are you talking about the 2D vector or a pixel or yeah? So for pixel inter integer ordinates in an image. I find it's a bit easier to use you and me, just to make it clear. So you have to give this up to the time. This side works. Actually, make a small helper function. Let's see, just to we're going to be accessing pixels a lot from you and the coordinates. If it just write a small function. Yeah, so you want to return the image buffer pointer and let's see we actually need just take we, we need the width as well so let's just take image pointer instead it's always nice to kind of, if I just need the buffer pointer, it's usually good to kind of take, don't take a higher level structure than the needs, kind of when you write functions, write a function to take the most lower level thing in that function you need, but now we actually need two things from the image. And so now I think it makes sense to actually pass the image. Pointer, so image. I'm going to get the data pointer and um, we actually want V times the image with plus U. That's basically each time we go down one pixels, you have to jump. Basically, one width of, of bytes. 
forward in the image buffer. Set that case of case of down and on one channel, and then we have to then we have to move as many unsorted chars as as the user character. That because you think about it, because it's row major is row by row in memory. So when we're when we're moving one pixel down, then we're jumping a whole row in memory, and then we're if we're moving just a pixel right, then we're just moving one single byte in memory. So um so just temporarily I'm going to be so I, I kinda wanna write to this image just for debugging while we're figuring things out, but it's a cult, so uh But we can get around that. So, Kuhn's cast is something you should very rarely use. Uh, like never ever commit code <laughs> with Kuhn's cast, basically, is my rule. But it can be useful in, in things like this where we just want to. Uh, we kind of want to break our const rules and just write to it just to test stuff. But but it's it, it's a dangerous thing, and you should be should only use it for testing. Like I've never ever used it for some some actual code, just like temporarily for testing. And I'm going to try to stick that here. So I think this should be fine. So Ah, it's not student cons cast, it's just cons cast. Okay. So uh huh. Uh so now I didn't really think too while I was writing this, so now I actually have a big I have a pretty big performance hit in my code already. Um Kudos if you spotted it already. So if you think about the order of U and V right here, how am I kind of accessing, like in what order will I access the pixels? Uh, since I'm incrementing, like I'm going through all of these, U0 and I'm going to all of these. So I will go column by column over but of course that's not how that's far apart in memory so i will kind of jump far apart in memory and then go back so and that's that's awful for the the cache basically um 
so that's the thing you should always think about while writing code is you should try to access memory in a way that's predictable for the prefetcher, which is the part of the CPU that tries to fetch thing. It tries to predict how you, how your code is accessing memory and then fetch things so they are already in cache by the time you want to use them. And accessing all over the memory in different places is very bad for the prefetcher and just moving linearly to memory is super easy for the prefetcher. And we will also, we can't load, we, when we load memory into cache, we don't load just byte by byte, we load a cache line, which is usually quite a bit of memory. I forget exactly how big cache lines usually are on modern CPUs, but, but uh, if we were just using one byte here, one byte there, we would load the entire cache line and then just read one byte and then we have to eject that cache line. So yeah, uh, if we actually, so we want to go pixel by pixel as it's laid out in memory. That way we use, we load the cache line, and then we use all those pixels in that cache line and then we're done. And then we load the next cache line, use all those, we use the entire cache line and then the next. And since we're going just byte by byte by byte by byte without jumping, it makes it super easy for the, um, for the prefetcher. So prefetcher is pretty smart, so it actually could, it actually would figure out even with this, I think the prefetcher might still, should still actually be able to figure it out because we're jumping the same amount each time. But we will still be wasting the cache lines, like we will be loading a cache line and just using a single byte. That, that, that's still a problem here. Even if our cache, even if our prefetcher was smart. So actually a performance fixer is simply doing this. That's it. So now we're moving just byte by byte by byte by byte without jumping to image buffer. So yeah, let's play around it. Write some stuff in memory maybe. Drag right to the image just to test it out. I pick out so if So on the new person to use this. Yeah, so you see now in my code in this. Um, like the modulus of two, which is when the U is divisible by two, I'm just writing black to the pixel. And you can probably figure out why this came in this black line. Like when, whenever the pixel I'm on is pixel coordinate and it's divisible by two, then I just set that to black. So this makes sense. So, and the reason I want to write to the image now is just at the beginning, um, we could maybe just write black or something when we detect the fast point, and then later we're going to we're going to make some better OpenGL code to actually make actually be able to print some information about the fast point. But for now, we can just write on top of the image temporarily. Of course, we hmm. actually that won't work when I think about it because we can't. We will be looking backwards. We can't alter the image that we're going to do visual detection on, of course. So yeah, that won't work. So we can't write to the image, so we'll have to 
actually um, they get some better way of visualizing the points that we are detecting. But for now, we can probably get to the console or something. Um, but we could still use it for a little while longer because actually. So, yeah, we have to make sure that we're being within the. that this circle of lines is not outside the image. So let's see. Um, yeah, let's see. And then, um, yeah, of course, this will be super clean. Yeah, you see now we're writing black to every pixel we're touching. And that gives us this border around where we will. So we can still check pixels around. That going outside the image. And then that. So, I think, so how are we going to loop through here? I think we can probably just create an array with like the offsets. Each of these, I think it's probably a good idea. So, this is, this is U, P, with the U value plus zero, and the V value minus three and then we can just encode it for all the pixels around. That's probably the best way. Interesting. 
it's now basically kind of encoding all the 16 pixels from Remember the way we had to find our coordinates. So, positive u is this way, and then positive v is this way. So, that's why log is minus, and then this. Yeah, this is minus v. So one thing we can think about is actually if it makes sense to reorder this. Then we'll like go through and read these pixels from memory, but that, that we can fix later. Well, just get it working first and then we can think about performance later. Uh, let's see, three, that's 12, two, three, and so. Oh, I right. lost track if there, um, that means one, three, that's two, two. Um, And this would be minus two, minus two. Block. One, 
Let's see. Yep. I'm gonna add it to the Because, yeah, when we're fetching this from memory, we probably want to fetch like that one, that one, that one, that, 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 that. Okay. Yeah, like this. Uh, which will probably work better with the prefecture. That's something we can profile as well. See. I think that should be faster, but yeah, it's that's the kind of thing that that you have to profile to make sure it is actually faster. But yeah, we can we can look into that later at some point. Sixteen of them. So now I kind of wanna let's see, just to make sure I've written this correctly. I kind of wanna just take the first pixel and make all the fast points for that pixel black, just to make sure that it looks okay. I haven't made any mistakes, um, so. So it's also kind of show. We're going to use them. And then we're just going to return out because we just want to do this with the first pixel, not everything. Yeah, that looks reasonable. Yeah, that looks pretty correct. So now you see I'm selecting the very first pixel that's within enough border that, and then I'm selecting all the fast points around it and then sending those black. So that shows that all our code is kind of correct so far because it's the pattern we are expecting and they're not outside the image. And there's no border, like if there were, this is right up to the border of the image, if there were, there's some gap between this and the edge of the image on top on the other side, then we would know that there's something wrong going on, but uh, yeah, this looks correct. And that's pretty good timing because I see that we have reached 
our 90 minute mark. Um, so I think I'm going to stop it there and then we can continue with this next time. Um, so thank you for watching and I hope I join, hope you join, uh, for the next episode of visual geometry from scratch.